This is the fifth video on introductory modelling. This one is going to look at fluid pipes and heat conductors when arranged in parallel. We remind the reader that we're only looking at steady state fluid flow or steady state heat flow, so we're ignoring any inertia effects. Fluid flow is created by a differential pressure between two ends of a pipe, and heat flow or energy flow is created by a differential temperature between two ends of a conductor. And we'll assume the viewers have watched the introductory videos in this series, so they know how to deal with the basic components equations and the components arranged in series. Next, the focus is going to be on what happens when we arrange these components in parallel. Now by parallel, we mean that the components share the same input, the same driving force, so the same pressure difference between the ends or the same temperature difference between the ends. Some engineering insight. Let's imagine we've got a tank of water. So I'm going to sketch this. Here it is. I've got this tank of water on the left. And then I open this opening at the bottom. And what's going to happen is um, the fluid's going to gush out with a particular flow rate. Now the next question is, if I had an exactly equivalent tank, or perhaps it could even be the same tank, same dimensions, same depth, what happens if I open two taps at the bottom? So it's coming out two places rather than one. Do I get more, less, or the same outflow? And hopefully what you'll tell me is you get twice the flow, if I'm simplistic, from this one on the right, because you've got two openings. And that's important that we recognise that for a simple physical system, if you've got more routes that the fluid can flow, you expect more fluid flow. What about if I have a conductor? So you'll notice here I've arranged two conductors in parallel. They've both got the same temperature here on the left and same temperature T2 here on the right. Now you could imagine this was equivalent to maybe putting uh, either one or two metal rods into a fire and the fire could be at T1 and the other two ends could be somewhere in the room at T2. So I've now got two conductors instead of one. What do I expect to happen? Well hopefully it's obvious to you that you get flow 1 and flow 2 and so the total flow is flow 1 plus flow 2. So the heat flow or the energy flow is going to be greater because you've got conductors in parallel. And the summary is that if you have parallel pipes or parallel conductors with the same input, the pressure difference or temperature difference, you should get more flow than if you have a single pipe or a single conductor. Let's remind you then of the equations we did in the first few videos. If I have a single resistor in a circuit with a voltage difference V1 minus V2, then the model is here. V1 minus V2 equals resistance R times current I. If I have a single pipe with a pressure difference P1 minus P2, I get a pipe resistance Kp times the flow rate of fluid through the pipe. And if I have a conductor with a temperature difference T1 minus T2, then that's equal to the effective resistance to uh, heat flow or energy flow times W, the power which is going through that conductor. What happens then if I put two pipes in parallel? And you'll see I've put the same pressure on the left hand side, the same driving pressure P1, and the same pressure on the right hand side, P2. And I want to know what flow do I get through these pipes? Now I can write an expression for each pipe independently. So pipe 1, I get this expression here, P1 minus P2 equals Kp1 times F1. So F1 is the flow through pipe 1. For pipe 2, I get P1 minus P2 equals Kp2 times F2, where F2 is the flow through pipe 2. Now if I put these together, so I've solved for flow 1, there it is, P1 minus P2 over Kp1. I've solved for flow 2, there it is, P1 minus P2 over Kp2. The total flow, if I write it at the bottom here, the total flow F has got to be F1 plus F2. So I add those two flows together, and what do I get? P1 minus P2 times 1 over Kp1 plus 1 over Kp2.
So again, what this, the viewer needs to focus on is I've simply calculated the flow through pipe 1, I've calculated the flow through pipe 2, and then I've just added those two flows together. How about two conductors in parallel? Well, I'm going to go through exactly the same process as on the previous side, except we've got different units here because heat flow will be in watts, um, energy per second. And so let's look at the expression I get for the first conductor. I've got the temperature difference, T1 minus T2, equals the effective resistance to power flow times the power, W1, so KH1 times W1. For conductor 2, T1 minus T2 equals KH2 times W2. So I get an energy flow down each pipe, and the energy flow depends upon the temperature difference between those two conductors. If I put this together and have rearranged it to find W1 on its own, there it is. W1 equals T1 minus T2 over KH1, and W2 is T1 minus T2 over KH2. If I now add these together and say, right, the total energy flow rate, W1 plus W2, is therefore given by T1 minus T2 times 1 over KH1 plus 1 over KH2. And the key thing to note here is the overall power transfer is increased because I've got the power going through conductor 1, that's W1, and the power going through conductor 2, that's W2. Let's put all these expressions together now and look at analogies. So in the previous video, we did electrical circuits, and we got this expression here. V1 minus V2 gives you I, the current flow, divided by 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. We've now put two pipes in parallel, and we see we've got a similar expression, P1 minus P2 instead of V1 minus V2. We've got the flow rate of fluid on top, F, which is in the same position as the I, and then we've got this same structure of expression underneath, 1 over Kp1 plus 1 over Kp2. If I look at these conductors with heat, you see I've got T1 minus T2, which has the same structure as V1 minus V2 or P1 minus P2. I've got the energy flow rate W on top, and then I've got this expression underneath with the same structure, 1 over KH1 plus 1 over KH2. So in other words, parallel arrangements for these different systems are analogous, and we get similar insights for all of them. When you add a parallel path in an electrical circuit, you allow more current to flow. When you add a parallel path with a fluid system, you allow more fluid to flow. When you add a parallel path with this heat system, you allow more heat to flow. And by parallel, we emphasize here, we mean they're driven by the same inputs, so the same voltage difference, the same pressure difference, or the same temperature difference. What happens if I had lots and lots of components in parallel? So here you see I've put lots of pipes in parallel just to emphasize the point. You'll see I can get the flow rate through pipe 1 using that expression, pressure difference divided by the pipe resistance. I can get the flow rate through pipe 2, pressure difference divided by the pipe resistance, the flow rate through pipe 3, pressure difference divided by the pipe resistance, and so on, all the way up to pipe n. If I want the total flow rate, I'm going to be writing F equals F1 plus F2 plus F3 plus dot 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 and you end up with this sort of expression here in the brackets. Okay, so flow equals the pressure difference times 1 over Kp1 plus 1 over Kp2 plus 1 over Kp3 and so on. Now, I'm not going to do heat flow for many different conductors because you'll see it's equivalent, and I'm sure you can now do that by yourself. Some conclusions then. Resistors in parallel, pipes in parallel, and conductors in parallel have analogous models. The resistance to flow, that's the flow of current heat fluid, reduces as more parallel paths are added because as you add more parallel paths, you get more flow. The equation for effective overall resistance is the same in all cases. You see we get this simple structure, this 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus so on, or 1 over 1 over Kp1 plus 1 over Kp2 and so on, or 1 over 1 over Kh1 plus 1 over Kh2. And therefore, these systems are considered as analogous.